Thanks to Canon for sponsoring a portion of this video. One of my most commonly asked questions is, how do we take notes that are fast, easy, level 1000 aesthetic, pretty, efficient, effective, guaranteed straight 100s on all exams and A++'s, make your teacher go, ah, make your classmates cry <laughs> from envy, and solve all your life problems? Patience, young grasshopper, do not fear, for today I will finally reveal my secret to having fast and perfect notes that always look like this and that take just five minutes. <laughs> Welp, you can't. Sorry for shattering your illusions this early in the video, but my notes are definitely not always this pretty or perfect, and I'm pretty sure this is the case for 98% of note takers out there, unless you quite literally print them from someone else who is in that 2%. And so quite a few of you asked me how to get over mistakes or perfectionism when taking notes, and there are two simple solutions to this. Just look around at the notes of the smartest people you know in your school, or just in general at your classmates notes. Chances are the majority of them are not aesthetic or perfect. For instance, all of my smartest friends have really plain notes, so aesthetic does not necessarily equal grades. And number two, just ask yourself, will I regret not getting a good grade or not having perfect notes? For me personally, the answer is great, not the look of the notes. So in today's declassified note-taking survival guide, I'll be showing you guys my step-by-step -step system for handwritten notes on paper in layers, and the best times, in my humble opinion, to make easy but aesthetic notes. So to begin, my main principle is to keep my notes low-key sus. Simple, understandable, and sparky. So the pre-phase or the pre-game phase, the pre-note taking phase, the pre before I start taking the notes, okay? I first separate my notes by notebooks if I can, or you can always separate your notebook into different classes by using page flags, that's also an option, but I personally prefer different notebooks. And I also tend to like lighter notebooks since my spine is already curved by years of carrying a backpack that weighs more than all of Taylor Swift's awards combined and the less weight the better for my back. But if my classes or my school requires certain notebooks or binders, I just go with that. Also, if your notebooks happen to look absolutely identical, a fun but very optional idea is to decorate the cover to distinguish it or to make a cover page in the beginning of the notebook. And maybe you go to a school where decorating notes isn't allowed, but at least probably you can on the cover. Speaking of cans and ons, the Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless compact photo printer is the perfect solution for making your notes and notebooks more aesthetic quickly and easily, and is the perfect portable photo printer for at home and on the go. The Canon Selfie compact photo printer allows you to print straight from your iPhone and iPad with AirPrint 1 and from your favorite device from any room in the house with Wi-Fi. And since it comes in various print sizes for all your crafting needs, you can use the printer for diagrams for your notes, collages on your notebook covers or cover pages, and useful photos to enhance your visual learning and memorization. So if you're interested in trying the Canon Selfie Compact Photo Printer, be sure to click the link in my description box. Again, a big thanks to Canon for sponsoring that part of the video, and now back to the note-taking tips.
So for my note-taking stationery essentials, they're all very minimalistic and very simple as you can see. And basically it's just a pen and a highlighter, ideally a highlighter that also has another end. So that that's it. <laughs> and big, big, huge, huge tip. If you're using a pencil or pen, try to find one that is comfortable for you. I had the issue where in high school, I think I was using a Muji pen or some kind of pen that didn't have a rubber support. I really injured my thumb so definitely try to figure out which writing grip and also which pen gives you the least discomfort big mistake big huge so another major question a lot of you guys asked about note-taking is how do you know what to actually take notes on and which information is noteworthy and so this is how i approach note-taking and i tend to customize it for each class so step number one is to see if there is a study guide or an outline that comes with a class. So for example, in this semester, my cognitive psychology class actually had study guides for each exam. So instead of just writing notes, I ended up writing directly on the study guide and just filling it out. Essentially, you'll know whatever is going to be on the study guide will also most likely end up on the exam and you won't be taking any superfluous notes. So if there isn't a study guide for the class, which usually there isn't, I then like to go to the end of the textbook and just skim through the outline, and then I essentially write whatever was in the outline, because usually they only include the very most important information. I will probably expand a little bit on what is in the outline, but it gives me a general idea of what to write about. If this is an option, I also like to just directly take notes on the slides. Obviously, this is definitely a lot easier. If you have an iPad, but if you feel like the slides of the lectures are useful and you just prefer to write directly on them and come to class prepared and not have to actually write out your own notes, that also can be helpful for knowing what to write. And the final thing I do to figure out what to take notes on is I evaluate the first exam or chapter test. So for instance, if I just took my first test, I like to think about did I feel like they were more based on the lecture or more based on the textbook? Were they more memorization based or were they more conceptual? And essentially by analyzing the questions, I can then tailor my future note taking in the rest of the class to the strategy that I have for the exams. <laughs> So phase one are in-class or lecture notes, fast, utilitarian, guide, letter for letter, and young. I know that doesn't really make sense, but just go with it. So I first tend to take notes on the lecture unless I have a class that specifically says that I should first read the textbook and then go to the lecture. And there are two options here. One is to just sit and listen to the lecture and not take any notes and just try to understand everything the teacher is saying. Or option two is to to try to write verbatim essentially everything that the teacher is saying without actually understanding anything that they're lecturing about. Simply because I have the memory of a squirrel and I tend to forget basically everything five minutes after I heard it, unless I wrote it down. And now that I've been doing online university, I tend to do both in one where I just pause the lecture and I try to understand everything that the professor is saying and I write notes simultaneously, but this is essentially impossible in in-person classes. Unfortunately, professors don't tend to agree when you just put your hand up and say, pause for me, ma'am. Doesn't really go well, so I don't recommend doing that. And instead, if you want to save time, you can either look at the lecture slides beforehand and just write down an outline of essentially all of the points and the slides. But if you don't have access to any lecture slides, then at this point, I literally just rely on pretty much one pen. I usually don't even spend time making any headers at this point, and I'm just frantically trying to write as much as I can down from the professor or the teacher. So here are some tips for making your notes faster. And what I like to do is I essentially shorten the words to essentially texting language. I will use plenty of abbreviations. I also use symbols. And yeah, this just makes note-taking faster and more efficient. 
So after the lecture, I usually quickly skim through the notes and I write down on a sticky note any questions that I have. So then once I get home, I take notes from the textbook on the specific chapter pages that the teacher told us to, but I only write down notes on things that were not mentioned in the lecture so that I don't write them down twice and waste time just repeating everything. And I double check to see at the end if the textbook answered my questions that I had on the sticky note. If it did, then great, and if it didn't, then I'll usually ask the teacher or I will go on the internet and try to find an explanation or tutorial that will help me understand the concept. <laughs> So phase two is better, accurate, succinct, informative, and complete. So these are the kinds of notes that I usually take when I'm preparing for a chapter test or a unit test. So at this point, I like to rewrite and combine my textbook and lecture notes into one and make sure I really fully understand everything that they're saying. So these notes are a little more visual and fancy than my previous notes, but still nothing too crazy. And honestly, you can make really pretty notes even with just two colors and a couple pens. So I think ultimately it's about doing what makes you feel best. If taking pretty notes really stresses you out, then just don't. But if you find it relaxing and you like drawing and doodling, it makes your notes easier to read, more visual, and just more fun, which is always a plus. So at this point, I also might add in some practice questions from past quizzes or examples from the textbook. If I feel like I need to review them, I will add in some visual diagrams or images. And sometimes I'll even do this thing where I cover vocabulary or certain phrases or words with a page flag or or just cover it up with a piece of paper and that way essentially my notes act as flashcards and I don't really need to make separate ones and I can test myself with my own notes. And so last but not least is the cheat sheet phase, which is cut down, helpful, essential, always with you, and turtles. I couldn't think of anything else for the letter T, so we're just going with turtles. So before making my exam summary pages, I always like to either do a practice test to understand what my weakest areas are or where I am struggling the most, or I do this thing called blurting, which is essentially where you just write down everything that you can remember from the top of your head on a specific topic, and then you check whether you got everything correct and you go over what you didn't get correct and you also go over the things that you didn't remember. And so after that, I make my cheat sheet, which is essentially my exam summary page, which I have shown in previous videos. Usually my exam summary pages are by far the prettiest or the most visually appealing notes that I make. And often this is because I'm trying to really, really remember what is on them because I've just noticed that when I have really visual notes and lots of diagrams, for whatever reason, I can kind of remember even certain information on where it was in the page. And and for instance, mind mapping helps me make connections between different concepts. And essentially on my cheat sheet or my exam summary pages, I just put down the information that I really struggle with the most that I want to keep reviewing over and over again for the days leading up to an exam and specifically on the information that I'm least confident in and I feel like I need to review the most. Also, I just want to emphasize that notes are not one size fits all and they also even vary depending on the subject. And here are examples of your notes and just goes to show that everyone has different note-taking processes. I think it's finding the system that combines good results and also enjoyable at the same time. I think that's the ideal lethal combo to make studying more fun and enjoyable. I'm like, no, I think I'm gonna eat first. <laughs> he's the tongue, he's trying to bite the tongue off. Wait, does it have a tongue? Yeah, of course he has How did you tongue. not notice this? Yeah. <laughs> 